There are a few poems in this book, the phonemes, that uh, do that thing where the first line is also the title. And I've always wanted to know what the technical term for that is in poetics or rhetoric. I'm sure there has to be one, but I've never known what it is. So this is called Begin with Darkness. Begin with darkness, black background, or rather picric yellow. With the speed of darkness, burning darkness, analyzed darkness, kiss of mast. My question is, what is the speed of dark? Does space, the black of space, have a speed? Many thanks. So that was um, Marcel Duchamp, Muriel Rukeyser, and somebody on some website about physics. This poem also has two voices in it that are not mine, and one is George W. Bush, and one is Gerard Manley Hopkins, and I'll let you figure out which is which. <laughs> it also does that wrapping in thing. <laughs> the grass was very clever, shooting darts of its self-propagating split into your socks, the fog came up and plonked field grazing rabbits extremely gently on the head. Host of pie plates flashed along your fence to wow the deer. The road unpaved and tilted ruts rain rot in surreptitious time, but recently because the loose strife knows. Blind hairpin. Dog leg into first gear gully dip till sun scours you from sleep into aridity, swish hush of sliding doors. A spider. A tanker or a subway bores its way into the plasma configuring, wert thou my enemy, O thou my friend and calculates the distance in woven shadow with no core. How we achieve that is a matter of consultation and deliberative deliberation. When I say I'm a patient man, I'm a patient man. The grass is armed. It is just using your motile leg as an expedient. have to be said? Does it have to be said by me? Does it have to be said by me now? A fault in the basement, a wide variety of emptinesses, pyroclastics fell from the cloud, quartzes precipitated in spaces that were not particles. You cannot cease, and the eyes have driven the mouth into obscurity. Ancient basement cord mountains, the great unconformity, empty and full of space. The acronyms warred against themselves, and a line was drawn and a body put on it. Bullets came through the wall. The moving floor erupted a shrapnel effect. At the risk of sounding ridiculous, deciding to go underground, I was having a horrible conversation with a person regarding infinity. This book I used to be titled for a long time was titled Plummet. And this poem is titled Plummet. Wake as we hang suspended in speed over Greenland. Brown glacier sucked rocks and a river of muscled ice dumping its most severe output into the sea. Like a jagged wealth of stale gingerbread, iced, plastic with frosting, 
and studded with whitish erratics, and the doily of chaotic cake ice. Hewn found fantastic geology in the chopped china plate of the sea. No outskirts or compass like this one, banished to the top of the world, Ma, a la paradise. Lonely, inhospitable, lonely, a proof out of Frankenstein, or how landmass in Dante shrinks away horrified from the crashing in plummet of the gigantic sulfurous beauty of the body of Satan cast out. It is dry on this airplane and hard to breathe. Muscle cramps seize the leg. Loved with a somewhat unconditional love. Plunges in meteor from the ether booted out of its universe niche. Abandon a holic attraction to the burning cold lake. Titanic and ripped, hard as a paragon, angrier. Hyacinthine and laamine, shower of sparks fucking the air as it falls. I'd like a seltzer with lime, please. I would like a curved view of continuous day to the edge. I would like to be mounded and creamy and empty and droplets and spread like that cumulus, shot through with blush flaws of sunrise as we speed away without seeming to move. The altitude air is a mouth, a pangea of personal everywhere. And the carved prong of Greenland has to start somewhere. The left coast of nothing defines itself by abutting this rock. For hours there was Atlantic, a monotony you could get used to, on which you had come to rely, and then <laughs> the stale devil's food cake of nude continent jutting abrupt from the sea. Hewn by topographical features, basalt shaped by water that won't act like water, that's implacable, stiff, adamantine, inimical, hard. But ductile, sinuous, snaking down, cutting the gullies, dragging its blade in the crustal dirt, slicing a washout, and pouring its thickened white rivulets into the sea. The glacier is going right into the sea, back to indefinition, a waste of its form, a reunion. As if rock were angry at water and wanting to separate, flinching away. As if water clung to and clawed at and pressed on the undilute rock. Tinge of hot pinkish gold fading into the lining. <laughs> the mechanism that so successfully levitates us. The cold we flout, immune in transit. The fear of failing to keep impervious, of falling, finding ourselves stranded on that pinnacle without scale, marooned, repudiated, quarantined in sea. Soul, rebel, unself, icy entity that touches down along the surface, runs with it, leaps preternaturally over chasms and fuses suffering with ringing preference. Inclement embryo, reject, 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 Reject the proud limbs and pectorals, venous bicep of glacier, choosing to spiral off, streak past, the stubborn, emotive protoplate tectonics that gather fiercely up and hurl away. What about the outward and downward motion of repetition? What about the mind as its own place? And the Lucifer face, all deeply scarred with cataclysmic fall, withdrawal from intoxicating grace, and how they lied and named this giant flinty uncomplication green. 
The indicator light still glows, the aisle telescopes, this must thou eat, and I ate the world. It was granular, dry, in sharp crumbs. It poked the membranes and abraded, stuck in the gorge and gagged a bit. But sweet, disappearing speck pushed away by constant engines, swallowed in albumin atmosphere. I teach um, a lot of epic. I teach freshman English, and I, so I end up teaching all these stories that like Paradise Lost and the Inferno that got in here. What was hurriedly invented in a gravity convulsion, hinge of hush folded over and split down the gutter, mouth, sugar, sun, code, leviathan, shatter, cling. Epic program setting metals on fire and a chunk of noise that presses in, impresses. Because I had been teaching this writing class, this freshman writing class for so long, and I kept talking, keep talking to my students over and over about thesis statements, and I actually read that poem as a thesis statement for the book. I was like, what is this book about? This is the thesis of this book, so I hope you could tell that. <laughs> Not aspects, but cuttings, the nature of the motion we call heat. You cannot cease to be a person who was born. They being tempted, the history of cold and absolute zero, Take this surface of the world and figure out how this surface came to be. So this is called Life of the Phonemes, and I guess um, this became the title poem. They, they fought over it in this one one. Before the the antediluvian spread, the alluvial wash, making orderly channels for still rolling grains, the sentence is sedimentary, grammar a breakage, silhouetted in faces, vases on screen, educationally speak, the visible halves meet, as syllabic practice, 500,000 words elusively pinned to 300 phonemes. Say out loud a man's meeting a woman's voices as traveling air pushed, plus minus, commotional. This gleam. Beat, sentimental source glitched, mental flare, short theme song of union. Profiles merge, progenitor, unsense fused, happy. <coughs> Motes split in the beam. I feel like I'm giving away maybe too many backstory secrets, but that's actually about the thing in Sesame Street where there are two voices in silhouette teaching syllable practice, like this, this, This is called Anger Sugar, and it's in parts. One, wind instruments and traffic. Overpasses arc like spittle across tight, weird extravagance of day. Oil wells churning, jabbing in hot, tall grass, and lizards flick hallucinogenically into cracks in parched ground as I pass. I am experiencing this dream. In this dream, 
I am ductile, metallic. Put my fist into the corrugated Quonset hut stained wall. My mark is a streak in twilight, a vanishing, punched solar plexus. Two. Milk jug, a pamper, a twisted, pitted silver muffler lie there in the weeds. The t-shirt says, fed up, or mob, in mobile corporation typography. The odor impregnated t-shirt on the floor and the wet towel are metonymy. Three. The dream has surfaces like this, caked, occluded, iridescent, Coca-Cola and splenetic rips. The pores of trance are closely packed and shellacked over, slithering, lank, a motorcycle and the hairless, warped, long motorcycle scar, Adonis muscle near the waistband, frayed and stamped. Four, the baby is a brine shrimp in a piss sea. The baby is a kitten, licked and licked. The baby's bones are honeycomb, lined with propolis and myrrh, and very, very thin veneer of smoke. Story of organic toxin honey. Story of a corpse floated in honey. Cracked hull boat and baseball bat and drywall screw. The baby is a bedroom in a mansion in a small town built on sand that's caught on fire. The baby manages. The baby fumes, a methodical Ariel who pours and drinks two private cups of milk. A spill, a pamper, and the glitter of the shattered headlight matched the fractal eye of a dead fly mixed in the gravel on the road. The baby is very wise about these things. Five. Lactose ducts, the nipple sugars, exhale sugars, clitoral sugars, reason sugars, thyroid sugars, callous sugars, the iron sugars, Mental sugars, history sugars, textbook sugars, internecine sugars, hyaline sugars, the grief sugars, fascia sugars, tendon sugars, cosine sugars, immediate sugars, wistful sugars, broadcast sugars, copy sugars, the limpid sugars, rose petal sugars, carcinogen sugars, investment sugars, Projectile sugars, the formula sugars, dendrite sugars, tenor sugars, survival sugars, the igneous sugars, pluvial sugars, optic sugars, insurrection sugars, armpit sugars, gaseous sugars, carpet sugars, the rogue sugars, coolant sugars, deep sleep, startle, sleep, condense, and supernova gnosis sugars drip. So this is the last one. This one is just called sugar. <laughs> Songbirds stud, they infiltrate, they deck the holly. Sugar wants to infiltrate you in its various molecular footprint forms, the white part like marzipan left out to harden. Dia de los Muertos skulls, gold-leafed and isinglassed with lurid teeth, hard roses. Mm. Walking down X, Q, A, B, my favorite enigmatic-looking letters street, to pick up videos. A smog of definition where dead surfboards lean against garage sides overrun by exudations of putrefier in honeysuckle trumpets, nectar spreading roar shocks on the breeze. 
handsome surfer peeling down the neoprene of invulnerable epithelium, zipper tape of externalized spinal column, like Venus stepping from his foam, dri foam drips that pock the sand. Epithalamium makes me sad now, but I'm working the crack carefully. An ant crawls up the icy colored cord into the printer port. And therefrom I can numerate the bone rattling qualities of sweetness. One, a thin fire runs under my skin. Asterisk, globules in dispersion, gutta percha pocket that dries out. Omega, thin, cloudy, latex. Infinity, sugar is redundancy, unequal, innermost part of bark, pistol, chocolate fraction. And bumper stickers, decals, triumphant fist and God's eyes, indecent magnolia blossoms bearing down. Swing sets. Why not say gardens overreach, pour stimuli up and down the hopscotch sidewalk? Live oak, chalk white flying buttress and pierced drum, leviathan, from off this coast misadventured onto Baja, into pickup truck, a single whale vertebra, like a scaled down plane propeller, like the wing bone of a prehistoric entity cast in a plastic matrix mixed with sugar, like Buddha squatting on a porch, as Gertrude Stein and Duchamp's fountain were said to be like Buddha. Who presides over the community agit flyers, disbursement, globe of thought craving calcareous, unreliable desserts, thorned, multifoliate portion, live oak in its lingerie of moss, avatar that loves a fleshy laugh. How then, if I sucked my mouth along the flanges of this dorsal wreck, salt, marrow, blubber bubbling out, would enormity use me for part of its ongoing job? Would I compose myself to wed something gritty, sinuous, unblushing, bleached? Mountains back away, kneel down, erode. The video store is closed at dusk. Blush knobs and spatulate pads of prickly pear bar my way back, a telltale drop of juice. The same or related birds cavorting, piercing and competing with arterial traffic, fairy tale blood spot drawn by this needle. haircut bangs and a ponytail, Leanne's little toddler clunks past me wearing a pair of her mother's shoes. 
I'm sitting along the side wall talking to a young student from LIU. She's nervous being here. Cliff is on my right. I've never sat along the wall in this direction, he says. Harriet's in the front row listening attentively as Lorenzo reads an oxygen tank beside him, a tube in his throat, and still cracking jokes. Eleni's in from Colorado. She tells me I'm looking good. John Godfrey kisses me on the cheek. Hello, Barbara, he says, as I walk out the door on my way home at 10 p.m. past the graveyard. Today it's not raining and I swallow. I will miss the poetry project, even though I told Lewis last week that I didn't think it would bother me that much. <laughs> And then a couple, uh, not last New Year's, but the New Year's before, I had come in and uh, I was going to read as one of the readers. And uh, I couldn't decide which poem I was going to read. Uh, and then Philip Glass came up and played. And I was next. And guess what? I had this poem with me. It's a section of this. Um, uh, it was a section of 7th Street. Late at night, driving home from Brooklyn, listening to Philip Glass's facade, a repeating noir melody floating over the tops of a few cars, rain pouring out of the sky and puddles forming in the street, something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. Nothing ever happens. Nothing ever happens. Something. Nothing ever happens. Just this. Alone in the car with so many raindrops and the windshield wipers going back and forth. And yes, I am leaving New York, but tonight I'm here in this car and the wheels are rolling over the bridge. I turn left on Allen Street in the rain and the lights and the windows and Philip Glass is relentless. Nothing, 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 something, maybe nothing, maybe something. I left New York, and then I came back, um, you know, four and a half years later, I found an apartment on the same block, so I'm on 7th Street still. This is a, a longer piece, um, which I wrote this sequence a long, long time ago, but. The light is light. A man wanders around Paris in a long black coat, searching for a woman while thinking obsessively about Henry Lefebvre's life, an old literary magazine, Luna Park, in his pocket. The pigeons perched on a lamppost and then gone. There's another story I start about a dentist. A few pages later, though, I begin to drift, put the pin inside the book on the page where I am, set it on the window ledge, and my glass is next to it, and then I turn off the light on my left side, then my right, then my left. The light is light, not drifting off anymore. I stretch out naked on the bed, looking for a woman. The sheet pulled halfway over my body. Unless I am naked, I can't sleep. Need a stack of books and magazines, too. And then I think about eating something, maybe later. I think about Dimitri at my desk back in my New York City apartment, typing with his back to me. I'm gone from there, too. But then someone reaches around me, turning toward the light. We turn toward each other. I can't see the center of his eyes, but maybe later, a woman behind us on a chair, a puzzle, a pose, and a magazine. Two others join with arms and legs. Now I'm lying still longer than before, and someone touches me on my arm. How will I sleep at my aunt's house on Friday, I wonder? She's gone, but she lived there for 30 years, and after she died, her magazines are still piled in the corner. My suitcase is on the floor, half-packed and light. When I'm there, I won't think about the emptiness of women carried away and wandering around the house, reclusive and distant, later elegant in her 70s like an aging model, later forgetting everything, almost gone when I sat by her side and she reached up and touched me. That's my breast, I said, moving her hand away. Are you a man? <laughs> no, a woman, your niece. Oh shit, I was hoping you were a man. <laughs> we both laughed and then gone. Maybe tomorrow night when I'm sleeping there, I'll wake up and hear the bedroom light click on. Please help me, help me. 
but her bed will be empty, and tonight I'm still here in the desert, the sun glowing a rose color through the tunnel of my books and magazines, and the swamp cooler chirping like a bird. I call Mika on the phone and talk about maybe coming back to the city. You won't like the light here, he says. I'm in a restaurant on 7th Street and it's raining. Later when I'm 80, wait, don't hang up. Later, much later, will you come for me and carry me home, carry me up the stairs like a leaf in the palm of your hand? Not a heavy woman, just a page torn out of an old literary magazine, carried around in the pocket of a long black coat. She's out so late in the blue early morning light, wandering up and down Fifth Avenue in Brooklyn. Took a couple sentences from Roberto Bolano in there. It's a little dark. It's okay, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna read one more, I just decided, okay. This is the last one in a collection called Cities in Memory. Um, you know, I made these with uh, little books with photographs. There's a couple of them available there, and they, but they have photographs by my son, Mika, who's right there, my personal photographer. Okay. Um, anyhow, so this one was, um, I did a lot of cities. It was for a project. Someone in Lynn Crawford invited me to write uh, with on Calvino and an artists were doing things too. Anyhow, the last one coming back to New York. Outside the train window, grass trees, houses, they grow taller and grayer until the city overcomes a vista. And whoosh! Underground, I go straight into Penn Station, socks and shoes soaking wet. Even the confidence man is wet and falling apart, water everywhere all day long, for two days dragging a heavy suitcase. Second Avenue Deli closed, a Hooters moving in. Little Esther's rent is higher than my monthly salary. Have trust, the cosmopolitan man says. A sign in Cliff's Kitchen, do you really want to work at Sardi's in December? I do not wish your eyes to catch a distorted image. On this corner, smokers congregate and plot some kind of revolution. Under her wide-brimmed hat, Rosemary Mayer sits waiting for me at a table at Greek Delphi. I'm late, I'm running, I'm knocked around, I'm bumped. A network of wires and pipes. Standing outside 158 East 7th Street, I look through the blinds at my once apartment, now a modeling agency with two guys in front of computer screens talking on telephones. The leaves from the trees in Tompkins Square are drifting downward. They crunch under my feet, up above the sky, and a little bit of blue. In May, Martine Bellin and I were hanging out after working on this book on, on Harriet Mullen that we worked on together. And uh, we were trying to think of something to do, to a writing project. And I had some uh, index cards there, and I said, there are 14 lines on them. We could write one line an hour for 14 days and have 14 sonnets. <coughs> so we did it. And if you want to see the whole thing, I'm, I'm going to read a lot of mine, but uh, they're both published together on Peep Show Poetry, which is a good site if you look for it. Anyhow, so I'm going to read some of these. Maybe I'm not going to read all 14, but maybe 10 of them. So they're sonnets. And um, I revised them extensively. Um, well, a lot of it's there. Um, but I brought in some of if you, somebody said it feels like a peep show into your life, you know. So I brought in uh, a lot of June and July, so, okay. May 9th, 2011. The locust trees are under constant revision. The passers-by are wearing hats. These things seem innocuous, but when he says that my body feels like home, a chair falls on my head. An omen, three years short of Medicare and my heart racing like a teenager. A drummer on Astor Place catches the beat. Crouched in a doorway on Avenue A, my hand over my left ear, listening to Cleveland on my right. Trucks, motorcycles, and buses blowing smoke. At home, a check from the poet's house and the sound of birds and muffled voices in the park. 
My neighbor's dog barks for an hour while I fold towels into small rectangles, the branches swaying high over Tompkins Square. Politicians want, politicians want to privatize education, kill Medicare, log the forest, 15,000 species cut off, cut out. Verizon and AT&T donate to the Tea Party. Sign here, quiet, distant traffic rushing in and out like the sea. May 10th. To sleep is beautiful with spring morning light. Our paths cross for a reason, they say, and then sometimes they run parallel for years and years. Outside, the Christians pontificate with loudspeakers over the food line on the edge of the park. Three times as many people this year waiting for a sandwich. The Lord loves you and gives you this sandwich and this apple. Bernadette asked me on the phone, are you still eating only grapes? I know you used to. There are 14 joints in the human hand, yod dale. 14 is also the Hebrew word for hand. And 14 pieces of the body of Asur shape all the forces. My cards keep coming up, one short, Hebrew through marriage line, African ancestors more distant, all of us related and yet in Bahrain, a woman can be horsewhipped for driving a car. And I am driving out to the island to see Dumasani. This afternoon in Prospect Park, a tree asked him to hug it, so he did. May 11th, 2011. A little bird is sitting on the window ledge singing. Duma meditates in a chair with needles in his body. The garbage truck lowers its tray, gears up, and moves forward. Folded back at my knee joints, reclining, I remember Alan. Then I curl into a child's cry. We live in the flicker. May it last as long as possible without neglecting the woman. When Alan was dying, his penis disappeared inside his groin. Try not to force anything. On the bike, I lean forward into the wind. First Joe Brainerd remembered. Then Perec, now I'm forgetting. Henry Drescher posted on, Erica Hunt sent you, Christy Maxwell wants to be, Andrew T. wants to be, Sally Silver's invited. The sounds of people talking in traffic, and here's an open book. He used a music score to write a narrative. It's not public knowledge, so please don't tell anyone I told you that. He held me inside his sweat jacket as the ocean winds whipped around us. May 12th. Why didn't I notice the bird sounds this morning? Busy mind with wide awake losses. Bike over to 2nd Avenue to bring a friend some lunch. Can this lover become a friend? Coasting along. That girl is pretty, isn't she? Michael Lolly told me once that I look like Barbara Guest. I looked at a photo of her youthful beauty and said to another, that's hard to hold on to, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe now with automated <clears throat> investigations and with a little nudge to the rectilinear, a swerve back into, what is this heartache anyhow? Madame Regent opens the drapes and the trucks and cars crawl along, uneventfully merge. Hi, Grandma, the little boy says over the telephone. I really, really want you to find me Mr. Tickle. One more book and we sink into the soft sofa with a flashlight and streaks of light that flash beyond. It's funny reading, like just spending the day reading over old poems and seeing like the poem I was reading about the project and how Time has changed, and some of those people have died, and it's a, a you know, it's just chilling, right? May thirteenth, two thousand eleven. Martin Luther said that girls begin to talk and stand on their feet sooner than boys, because weeds always grow up more quickly than good crops. <laughs> Today I was a troll under the bridge, the evil fairy on the slide. Under the Long Island sun, a robin redbreast posing in the Blue Point Library with a swarm of mothers and toddlers. At noon, Luke's asleep in the chair and Logan's bouncing in his crib to James Brown. I'm dozing off while a wise pig mother on TV is planting a garden. I happen to like weeds. Plants not valuable enough to be harvested, but hardy and prolific. 
5 o'clock and I followed the digital line P650 to avoid the BQE, then the aggressive search and swerve to find a spot. On the elevator, three single women with grocery bags, broccoli and green beans and two books, and the dishes pile up. The character, the man, and the idea takes hold again, the romance of our bodies. May 15th, wake up looking at locust leaves in the misty sky, write an email, a thank you, and then stretch out a siren and the trees squish in the wind, hesitate, then squish again, aloe leaves at the Korean bodega, hooray for more gray sky and my downstairs neighbors rolling, rising, falling scales, and faint voices of screaming children in the park. Summering is a word the very well off to use. When Jacqueline plays, I float out the window frame. This is a Coney Island bound Q train. The next top could be charmed except when a door in the hallway slams. We seem to have forgotten that the I Ching gave a positive prediction. For a very long time, I love your skin, I love your skin too. What a crazy world we live in. Entropy and megantropy. May 17th. Sometimes it's not possible to resist the fall in one's heart, an alternative movement, opposite sides turning left then right. Find your balance, run into Brenda in alphabets, looking at skirts. Then I'm sitting on a stoop on 14th Street, talking on the cell with Nika. Mo moments of affection and affinity, an intersection between essay and fiction. By the time I wrote down the fourth word, staccato, I was exhausted. They just end like that. Soon you would realize, the poet says, that in our faculty meetings, there's always someone whose rank we don't quite understand, and they are always there looking at us. I miss you, dear, texting me, the words appearing inside bubbles, possibly possible, and then a little more. May 18th. Sleepy, but with a quick dash of water on my face, I bike over to Wooster Street. Arm balances and forward bends. Regeni, my teacher, right there. Everyone is quiet. A passenger in a yellow cab swings open his door into the bike lane, and I squeeze around him. Open your eyes, mister. Sweeping the floor, I pick up a paper clip. A student sends me extra work to critique, and the class is over. Should we become more organized or continue with this chaos? What I love most about this room is the window in the middle of the largest city of green rainforest. In the subway car, a skinny guy with bare tattooed arms and a blue baseball hat, four days old beard, soaked boots, and a wooden cross around his neck, writing meticulous prose, tiny narrow rows filling up the page, and then he nods out, leaving a blob of black ink in the middle. This is the last one I'll read here. May 20th, down Avenue A over 3rd Street, through the garage and across Houston. Chain up my bike, squeeze knees against upper arms, and lift up feet and diaphragm like a mosquito in the rain. Gliding over Bleecker, Bowery, 4th Street to Avenue A. In the rain, in the rain, in the rain, it never stops raining. Do your brakes work in the rain? Does your bladder stay healthy as you age? Or do you let echo photos invade and shut down your computer? Bloody nose and food poisoning interrupt my daily accomplishments. Starksnet is a super saboteur with a digital code that looks legitimate, a little like typhoid Mary speeding at the speed of sound. I climb under the blankets and drift off down the alleyway. I'm reading those very fast. How much time do I have left? Uh -huh. yeah, no Completely. I always put this watch on. I never look at it. <laughs> I'm going to read from a sequence called 12 Green Rooms. And uh, 
Tom Savage got me started on this by encouraging me to write something about the oil a disaster. I read. Okay. Third Street, Tucson. The light is white today and the oranges are glistening with rainwater. Orange trees were brought here by the Spaniards along with the Jesuit missions. Today the birds are quieter than usual. Maybe when they sing a lot, it's because they are thirsty. The Santa Cruz used to flow year round, but then ranchers, gold miners, farmers, population, suburban, water, drain, sprawl. On Third Street, a young man comes out of a seven bedroom house to smoke on the porch. I pass under a big sparse tree with low branches, so old, and just standing there, one of the tallest trees in the neighborhood. It appears deciduous, but in fact, it's a low pine in Aleppo, an ancient tree from the Mediterranean. The estimated appraisal value is well over 20,000. Brought to Tucson as seedlings by a gas station as a gimmick 70 years ago. Too much, too little. Water flows from the Colorado River to the Gulf of California, and Tucson gardens overflow, downpour, perennial springs, irrigation, tree-lined, rivulet, monsoon, riverbed, barren, run and dry. Stein says the work of man is not in harmony with the landscape, it opposes it, and it is just that that is the basis of cubism. Pedaling along, I look down at my blue socks, one higher than the other. No city money for street repair this year, but instead an incredible pattern of intersecting cracks and potholes. Bluebeard Cafe. My dad sent me an email saying I wasn't particularly mistreated, that he had spent the same amount of money on each of us. The Caspian Sea region in Iraq has potentially the world's largest oil reserves. He beat me, yeah, but not unnecessarily. When he found out he shouldn't do that, well, he just said he had never beat me over anything I didn't deserve. He would accuse me of something, and if I admitted I got half a beating. There were nuclear projects in Iraq somewhere. Well, it was a good thing to do anyhow, wasn't it? Now he's a poor little old me thing. He threw the pressure cooker at my mom's head once and broke the pane window. Little Joey was sitting on the floor watching the history and residue of Eon's past. So old and just sitting there, surge, gush, disperse, dissolve, scatter. And he didn't think anything of it. Excuse me, miss, could you bring me more coffee? Yeah, this is fine. My first memory was shutting a door and hiding. You had those stripes too, didn't you? I had them all over my back. You were shot too, yeah? And they, then they kept coming after you hour after hour and picked it out themselves. I know. Black sludges drifting over the U.S. shores, greed, stupidity, collateral damage, quiet, low, along. I read something and then I realized that's why I can't have a relationship with anyone. I had to cry, surge, trickle, rush forward. But to tell you the truth, no matter what, I'm a happy little surge, spill, trickle, rush forward. I overheard that conversation in the restaurant. It's like a Bluebird Cafe. A woman tries on a pink veil. This is called Nonstop Las Vegas. A woman tries on a pink veil. A guy in the back has his computer open to a porno site. A naked man with an erect penis. Some other folks in back are playing poker. Everyone is chattering up above the thunderstorm. I order a cup of tea. Cloudburst. Down below, betrayal, bayou, abundance. 5,000 dolphins, drumfish, jellyfish, northern gamut, man of war, sea turtles, dragonflies, and the laughing gulls are the hardest hit. It costs 15,000 to clean the oil from one pelican and return it to its environment. The order of peliconiformis, ancient symbol of heavy rain, hurricane, down below darkness. Then the lights dim and I fall asleep and dream I'm walking past a dark body of choppy water, wandering out to the outer edge of a peninsula, the tiny band between us, 
shaped like a long finger with water thrown wildly about. When the sun comes out, the slips of brown and green oil start to boil. Sentient beings sold down the waterway, sway that baby sway. In Nigeria, thousands of corroding pipelines, 600 plus million barrels, <coughs> spilt, brutal, shock, throat money, shut up. Suddenly from around the corner, a female lion charges toward me. I stand absolutely still, stare her down until she disappears. Then I open one of my eyelids just to make sure. There are these incredible photographs in here that my son took of animals. So this is uh, he had, you know, this photograph of his cat um, looking straight at you. Bayport, Long Island. A shock of black hair, little cleft chin, round face, little feet like a pelican. Pelican, pelican, pelican. Two weeks later, he is more than one-third larger. One day, he'll be over six feet, with a ten-foot wingspan and a layer of webbed fibers. Throat pouches full of water, fish, oceanic, ripple, spill, sentient, brim over, full over. The terns are fragile little birds. One dive into the oily water and they don't resurface. I take the baby into the kitchen and then in the red glow of the nightlight, we sway that baby sway. Peliconiformis, ancient symbol of spill out, spill over. Later I come down the stairs for a glass of water. In the dark, the TV is on with no sound and Greg is stretched out in the chair, his big linebacker body and the infant curled up in his armpit, both sound asleep. Half a mile south, the Atlantic tide laps against the shore. Little green rooms. Cacti are growing tall in the yard, and as I walk through, one collapses and the other crashes down. We untwist the big one and prop it back up. Now it has a network of walls inside, little green rooms with no ceilings. I'm standing inside when water and fluid start rushing in. Torrent, squall, spill over, gushing, welling. Up the cactus goes again, towering overhead. Now it's my childhood house and my aunt and uncle are there and the house is overgrown and decaying. The infant is curled up in his father's armpit. I beg them not to sell the house, but someone has stolen the water spigot and all the trees are dead. There are spider webs with black widows in every corner and crevice. We could fix it, I say, by each taking one room. We could get jobs and save our money, put a wood and a wood floor. We could have running water and lawns watered with recycled rainwater. We could have a filter system installed for clean drinking water. Rushing, torrent, squall, spill, over, gushing, welling. We could still watch television and drink iced tea without a worry. We could each have our own electric car and mini computer and a garbage disposal, solar heating. We could have our organic groceries delivered to our doorstep, a special room for meditation and working out. We could have our own stationary bicycles, lots of books, of course. We could enjoy ourselves. I'm too old for all this, my aunt says, and so are you. Let's not get carried away again. <laughs> all I need is one little room and a mat to sleep in a <coughs> blanket. Water, I need some water and a little burner a cup and a plate, and some vegetables and fruits. That's all, Barbara. That's all. <laughs> B&H Dairy, Cobble. Esther's face is more wrinkled, but of course, she's 70 years old now. And she's been living and working in Afghanistan with battered, imprisoned, homeless from the wellhead, mother and baby. We're sitting in b &H on 2nd Avenue. The man is wiping down the counter and Esther's talking about driving a car across the dry, dusty mountains outside Kabul to help set up a new shelter. The men in the car were surprised. They had never seen a woman drive before. And Esther can be a wild driver. 
directed, but kind of unpredictable, perennial, recurrent, permanent, continuing precipitation. When one animal is extinct, another proliferates. The falcon is the fastest bird on earth. Afghanistan used to be a migratory thoroughfare, but the birds are not flying that way anymore. 10,000 villages destroyed, unsafe water, infrastructure leaks, bacterial contamination, landfills. I ask her if she wears a shawl on her head. No, I hate something on my head. <laughs> Do you ever see any woman outside with their heads uncovered? Never. Not one? Not one? Just you? Aren't you worried you will excite someone's anger? I'm here, aren't I? Well, you only can die once. Well, then I will. I'm not covering my head. <laughs> this is a good friend of mine. It's like that. I'm just going to read one more, the last one here. It's called Second Avenue. An old woman crosses 11th Street, pushing a walker on wheels. Shrunken with her frame bent forward, wearing little heels and a tweedy old coat, she stops for a moment and lifts up her foot to kick some stone or dirt off the wheel. She does this three times. Then she starts rolling steadily, one foot stepping carefully in front of the other. As she passes my bench, a taxi pulls up and the door opens. Two women climb out, one about 40 and the other near 60. Both are wearing black sunglasses carrying canes for the blind and holding on to each other. They stumble a little over the curb and then bump right into the old woman. The younger woman says with a questioning lilt, UPS? The old woman stops rolling, looks at them and points to the UPS store. But then she looks at them again, realizing that they can't see. She says something else, maybe hold on to my arm because they lean against her as she steers them over toward the store. The door is too heavy. Before I can stand up to help, the clerk opens it, and our mortality is documented, the shadow slowly gaining detail. One of the women leans out the door and yells, Thank you, God bless you. Ecstatic, static, wet, inlet, rivulet, let us meet at the river in silence with the gliding, sliding PCB fish. Down the street, the old woman goes, lifting her left hand slightly as if to say, don't even think about it twice. And just then, at that moment, as the woman makes a left onto 10th Street, there is a cloudburst and it is raining. <laughs> <laughs>